What is going on everybody? Welcome back. Room with Texas Water Fishing and uh, well, you know, we have some weather stuff going on. I was just on the PC. I was just on the phone talking to customer dealing with some stuff for Up Above Adventures, uh, the charter company that I work for and uh, help manage. Well, you know, unfortunately just had to reschedule a trip because this weekend is not looking good to being out there in the water this week at all really and we're having a couple of different things that are going on and that's kind of why i wanted to stop and and just talk to uh all you guys all my viewers subscribers patrons wanted to talk to you all uh, real fast about what is going on what the weather is doing and it's going to be really funky and there's a few variables up in the air as far as fishing goes um it's not going to be advisory to be out in small crafts. It's not going to be advisory out to be out in your kayaks and, and get into some of this stuff. And we'll take a look here on the PC real fast. And I'll show you just what I am talking about. Now, the flounder season is upon us. And we also do have those drums, those big, nice bull reds that are swimming through the area. And uh, yes, I know that flounder season is closed. It's closed until uh, after mid mid of december but it doesn't mean that you you're not going to run into them and they're not going to migrate and you can't catch them now i do enjoy catching flounder whether i could keep them or not keep them i catch and release a lot of my fish anyway most of the fish that i do catch in shore i release anyway but uh, i do enjoy flounder fishing i know it's mind-blowing for people to think man you're still going out there and you're still catching the fish and you're just catching and releasing it in my mind it's no different than Catching shark and releasing shark, catching bull red, releasing bull red, catching big uglies and releasing big uglies. Not only is it no different, but flounder are very, very tough. They're very, they're very tough uh, uh, fish, and um, you know, it doesn't hurt their feelings. I've asked them over the years because I do fish for them a lot, and they and they say they're they're completely and totally okay. So going forward, you'll see me out there fishing for flounder. Actually, I do have a video I need to edit, and you'll see us fishing for flounder. And this is before the closure. So we did go out with Captain Cody and Laddie, and we did go out, and you'll see that video coming up very soon. I just wanted to take a break and talk to you about, take a minute and take a break from my day and kind of talk to you and show you what we have going on weather-wise. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please go and do so. Like the video, leave a comment. All that stuff really helps the channel out tremendously. All right, and don't forget to go over there and check out Up Above Adventures. Um, got a hook. We got an excellent vessel. You want to book a trip, book a trip. Uh, but you should at least, at the very least, subscribe and follow us on social media. So let me click on here, and I'm going to start recording the screen so you can see exactly what I'm talking about and what I'm looking at. Because um, you may or may not have seen it online or on social media. But if you look here, uh, Galveston is 82 degrees. But if you look here right here, we have... Raphael, Raphael, uh, not a Ninja Turtle, but uh, we do have Raphael, and he's out here, and he's going to come through this area and kind of give us kind of a hard time a little bit, make people's blood pressure go up a little bit. You know, we, we're, we thought we were done with tropical storms and hurricanes and all of that, but this has been a really, really funky year. Now, as he comes closer... To us, what was that at? I saw an image earlier, or I saw something earlier. It might have been this one. But as he comes closer to us, um, we're not going to really, we're, we're I, I don't expect it to bother us. I don't expect it to bother us at all because we do have a cold front, and it's going to get pushed off a little bit. Uh, so, well, we got to skip this ad. Hold on a second. I, and I don't want to get in trouble for copyright. So, um, let's mute this guy. Let's mute this guy. Let's mute that guy. I don't want to get in trouble for copyright because this is not my my information. This is something that I'm pulling off of um, of the weather channel. But let me just skip over here, and you can see right here, we're gonna have a little we're gonna have a cold front that comes through here, and that dry air and cooler temps is probably gonna push it more towards Florida. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Is kind of what I saw a little bit this morning. Yes, it does have the cone of uncertainty where they're trying to say that we could be impacted by it. Um, nevertheless, 
when there ever when there is something in the Gulf like that, we are impacted by it because we do get the wins. We will get some of the wins. We might get the wins. We might not get the wins. It depends how close he gets. But we will get the top a, a little shh, Marley. Marley, stop. We will get the higher the elevated water conditions uh, along our coastal area and coastal flooding. Now we're expecting we're getting that today. We're seeing that already today, and it has nothing to do with the tropics tropics it has to do with the amount of wind that we're getting out of the south now if you look right here on wind finder and this is one of the most reliable wind apps that i have been using uh i used to use windy but it was kind of hit and miss with that it started getting more missed than hit but let's let's look at the south jetty right here and the south jetty is 28 mile an hour winds and right now it's one Oh, 08 in the afternoon by the time you see this you know much much might be later than that and you can click on the forecast here and you're gonna see so the wind gust is near 40 miles an hour that's crazy that's a lot of a lot of wind you can see the chop right here six footers out there that's a lot of that's a lot of waves that's a lot of action and then we get the front we have the front that's coming in tomorrow on Tuesday let's show you that i'm gonna jump back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and yes eventually i am going to talk about flounder so keep your keep your let's go let's go to daily so right here you see the front is going to come in and it's going to start pushing winds out of the north north and northeast it's going to it's a small window it's only a two-day window when you get those north winds and then it's going to switch back to the east east and then we're going to get another little front that's going to come through i say little but another front that comes through and you see right there north northwest winds and that's going to be on saturday all right uh both of these are going to bring some rain again this is galveston but both of these are going to bring some rains and it looks like we're going to get a little bit more rain on the 13th on um wednesday on the 13th but this front that comes through our area is what's going to help push away that um and the front that's going to come through tomorrow is going to help what's going to push away some of that uh some of that tropical uh disturbance that we see there's gonna come you know they're, they're calling for it to be a category one and then kind of die back down um i'm not losing any sleep over it i'm really not um what i'm looking at again is the high higher level the elevation of water that's going to get pushed in uh typically when you do have these fronts it will push out water but with the water levels up, it's already high. Like, there's already coastal flooding warnings. It's already high today. So, um, this this northern uh, north uh, cold front that's going to come in is going to push some of that out. And then we're going to probably see it get pushed back in a little bit as the storm gets closer. And then we'll probably see it get not really pushed out um, on Saturday on the 9th. But you... It might it might get pushed a little bit. It just depends how long we have those north winds for. I don't think it's gonna drop like drastically, like the marsh are gonna dry out. But you're gonna you're gonna we're gonna experience that. So um going into the weekend, wind, no wind on Sunday, 10 miles an hour, not bad. 13 mile an hour Monday, not bad. Really, 15's not bad, right? It's not too too bad. Right now it's blowing and going, right? It's blowing wind. But it doesn't look like it's going to be too, too bad going forward. We'll take a look at Windfinder. What does Windfinder show? And Windfinder shows that it's, just, it's going to be chill. It's not going to be no issues, right? We're Right now, we're getting a lot of strong south winds. Down the front's coming through. And then the winds are doable. And the winds are doable. And they kick up again on Saturday like we showed. That we're going to have that other cold front come through. Um, but it's not bad. Look nice, sunny. Um, Temperature-wise, and be in the 70s and feel cool. Uh, this weekend, after what Tuesday, we get this front through. It's going to be in the 70s. It's not going to be a really cold front, but it's going to be a little cool front. Saturday is going to be nice and cool. So, I mean, yeah, we might have some good fishing weather. Looks like this. Um, was expecting for it not to be too good, but yeah, look at Sunday. Sunday looks decent. Sunny, 66, 70. 72 is a high, low winds. Sunday might be a really, really good day uh, to go out there and chase some of those redfish. Again, I don't see it really causing a huge impact. We're not getting strong north winds, so I don't really see it pushing the water out. 
with all the rain that we're might get with these fronts or we should get we're gonna definitely get with tomorrow's front um we'll dirty up the water we'll make it more cloudy we'll bring uh a lot of the the freshwater aspects raise the level of freshwater driving some of the fish out of the lower water lane areas like speckled trout it might affect some reds it'll definitely affect some bait so whenever the bait goes you you tend to see the predator fish go uh, i don't see anything happening with the flounder i don't really see there being a kick up in uh the flounder movement for those that are waiting for flounder to run through whether you can keep them or not they just want to go out there and catch them i don't see that this weather systems that we're going to have really impact the flounder fishing what typically what typically needs to happen is that we need a strong cold front that's really going to drop the temp and really get things nice and cool get the water temp drop the water temp a little bit we might see that a little bit on saturday with the water temp dropping just a bit but um with this tropical issue that's going to push through the gulf raise the water level i'm not too sure what we're going to see with that we, like i said we got kind of three things going on we got a couple of fronts we have a strong south wind right now and then we have that tropical system that uh, is going to push to our area um, typically when you do see that northern front that comes through and drops that water temp pushes the water level out drops the water level out of the bays and the bayous and the marshes that's when you see that nice big surge in flounder that's what we want to see with these storms like we're going to experience uh, tonight and tomorrow uh, and having that big front come through what that does is that really triggers their bite for a lot of those bull reds big black uglies big black drums big uglies nice big bull reds that nasty strong currents that open water whether you're gonna you know find refuge and try to fish around Siwa Park or you're gonna go hit one of the piers off the seawall or maybe roll the dice during the day a little bit and go fish you know uh surfside jetties uh keep in mind you do have those rocks that spray that gets over those rocks so i like to use uh you know those spike cleats that that uh that my shoe sits inside um i those um i, I wouldn't want to call them sandals um but i do like to use those cleats that helps me a little stay a little more mobile when being able to walk around slippery rocks uh, i've been using them probably like three years now and uh they i love them they, they come in great uh i'll leave that information description section of the video in case you do want to find them i'll leave their link down there but um you know this is good time it is a good time to go out there go get those bull reds you you have rough nasty strong currents nasty weather conditions and those reds just thrive on it it's not favorable to us anglers but uh but the reds will be out there those big uglies will definitely be out there. They love that current. And even flounder. Flounder like that nasty weather too. So I'm not saying that you won't go down in that flounder corridor. You're not going to find the flounder. I'm not saying that they're not going to be there. I'm just saying typically to kick off the run. And we hadn't seen it yet. Uh, they're starting. They're feeding. They know they have to move. It's that time of the year. They're feeding aggressive where they normally are residents and lay in wait. Um, hopefully this front will cause them to kind of start moving a little bit but i really don't see it being a real real big push but hey guys stay tuned for that video that should be coming out maybe maybe tomorrow or the next day um do have that video it was a fun day fishing out there with captain cody and miss laddie we also had charles on the boat and yeah yeah we all captain charles we, we all had a really good time on and one fished around a little bit around um the west bay area so stay tuned for that don't forget check out up above adventures youtube channel go there subscribe like all that stuff helps that channel out do it on here too i appreciate each and every one of you hopefully next time you catch me look it up